let me start the, the show. I will need to adjust it so that I can flip back and forth real easy. So in PowerPoint, a little lesson on PowerPoint, you can set up a slideshow if you have to do a presentation. And uh, when you do a setup for the show, you can make it come up full screen like you probably see a lot of teachers do. Uh, you can also do a browse by an individual, which is just going to stick it inside of a win window that you can then shape and make the window whatever size you want. And uh, tell you the truth, I've never used browsed at a kiosk full screen. I'm not really familiar with why you would do that uh, unless you're setting it up for, I guess, to repeat at uh, some kiosk or something, touch screen, I don't know. So I'm going to set it up as an individual so it's inside of a window and I'll just press F5 on my keyboard. And that starts up the show. All right. So in here, after you have finished CAD uh, uh, AutoCAD Fundamentals chapter, let me flip quickly. In here, you're making uh, basically lines and circles. You're trying different input methods. Uh, you're not putting dimensions on things yet, so don't worry about that. Don't don't try to dimension it. Some people do. Uh, you know, getting more experience with the line command, racing stuff, using the arc command, and, uh, and then you toy around with the ellipse command. You look up information about how to do it, how to run it, and you create this ellipse as part of your chapter review questions. <clears throat> and then you do a little uh, 30 degree type of arc, that is the arc length uh, spreads out between 30 degrees, okay, it's 30 degrees long if you want to think of it that way. So you look up in the Autodesk Exchange, which is basically the help menu, as to how you set it up and do it uh, like this, okay. Then you do a couple of these drawings over here. All right, so in chapter two, moving forward, uh, when you look at the uh, things that you're going to be doing here, we uh, get a little more involved with the world coordinate system, uh, drawing limits, you know, starting this using the startup box, which I've already told you a little bit how to set that up, you know, with the startup uh, variable, you know, the setting for it, uh, changing the grid and snap intervals, uh, making the toolbars display or not, and uh, begin working with geometry snaps or object snaps. And then uh, the good old trim command, okay? and uh, the basic way to use the trim command. Polygons, so any kind of sided figure, you know, whether it's a square, if you want to use it for that, you can, or a triangle, a hexagon, a octagon, whatever kind of gon you want to make, dodecagon, which is a ten-sided figure, okay? Uh, so whatever you want to do, how many ever sides you want it to have. And then uh, creating circles that are uh, tangent to two different entities, and then you provide a radius. So you'll create this shape, ultimately, and that has a lot of that in it, where you uh, draw another arc tangent to these two arcs, and then provide a radius for it. Also, you'll be exploring more uh, technical drawing and dimensioning, and how radiuses or radii and circles are dimensioned, and how shapes are specified, okay? That uh, some of it you may have never seen, and others of you have seen blueprints or maybe uh, worked with it quite often. All right? Then when you look at uh, page two, you see the user examination objectives coverage. 
So once again, this is not our book, section one, two, three, four. This is sections and categories that's inside of the user examination. Okay? So what the author is providing you is a reference guide showing you that in section one for the user examination, topics like this are covered on these pages. Okay? So, the main characteristic is to be able to create and modify 2D and 3D geometric entities. That's what we're trying to do. That's the ultimate goal. That's your, if you are become a CAD drafter, I mean, you do that all day, every day that you work, and you're creating and modifying entities. So there's a CAD systems, there's several different uh, programs out there and they all provide a different variety and different named commands for uh, doing this creation and doing this modification. So we're going to be looking at what AutoCAD does uh, and there's just like, you know, a bucket full of different ways to edit in AutoCAD and they overlap one another. So you're going to discover while you're drawing, oh, Hey, I can do it this way. And uh, it's fine, you know. If you find another way to do it in AutoCAD, that's fine with me. Just long as you cover the basics that the tutorial and, uh, and you start with that. But be, feel free to root around and experiment and, you know, you can find other ways. Just don't get carried away and get lost in doing that. Uh, so, uh, it states here, uh, CAD systems, of course, replace traditional drafting or pencil and paper. But the CAD user must have a good understanding of basic geometric construction techniques. Okay? How uh, geometry is constructed in technical drawing. Circles tangent to other circles, lines tangent, uh, the way arcs are uh, filled in, in, in the way we place geometry uh, in relationship to other geometry. So, using the user coordinate system and the world coordinate system that we talked about, uh, we're going to create geometry in the world coordinate system. We're not still not creating our own coordinate system yet. You'll do that when we explore the 3D toward the end of the semester, which is in about seven weeks. <laughs> quickly approaching. All right. So dynamic input. One of the things AutoCAD added uh, in 2006, it states, uh, AutoCAD added this dynamic input method, and uh, you have information available to at your fingertips while you're drawing. You can turn this off and on, okay? So, it's not designed to replace the command line, but, you know, it kind of does. But we still use the command line. So, here in uh, AutoCAD, let me maximize my screen, and you all pay attention to that too. Don't cheat yourself on drawing area uh, and leaving your window minimized or uh, scaled down, okay? Always uh, maximize it and get, get the full advantage of every inch that you can, uh, you'll need it, you'll want it. So down here in your toggles, okay, is a funny looking little cross with a little box tied to it, and uh, it kind of looks like that. Okay, here's a cross, here's your cursor, and got a little box next to it. So down here in AutoCAD, in the toggles is uh, dynamic input. It's also tied to your F12 key on your keyboard. So, you know, that left hand of yours, or if you're left-handed, your right hand that's limp, that's laying there on the desk or 
scratching your head or picking your nose or whatever it's doing. It can also be used on the keyboard to do things, okay? So it can reach up there and touch the keyboard every now and then and do things, and you don't have to go hunting for a toggle or a button or something to switch on and off or start a command. You can use that left hand to start up a command or end one or... Uh, so, you know, take advantage of it. Uh, those of you that aren't necessarily going into uh, the drafting profession, uh, you know, you can probably ignore this a little bit, but those of you that are thinking about CAD as a profession or drafting as a profession, uh, time, of course this is in all jobs, time is money, and then it, operating a CAD system, it gets down to how can I get this done in the fewest number of clicks? You know, how fast I can get it created accurately, all right? Because when you work in an engineering department with five or six other drafters, there's a little competition going on. Sometimes friendly, usually friendly, okay? But who can get the work done the quickest and the best? It's going on all the time, okay? So a little push there. So you want to uh, look for the most efficient way to do it. And so that's why you're in school. That's why you're in training. You try to find those methods. And as you stay in the program, you know, after a couple of years of courses, you know, you begin to find the quick and fast and accurate way to do things. At the beginning, we kind of cover the basics and we're, we're looking at, the general accepted way to do things, okay? That is not always the fastest, but we're trying to learn the concepts, all right? So we click on here to turn on and off dynamic input. When it's on and you draw a line, you can, I just typed L, enter. There now is a box. I haven't picked a point yet. And so AutoCAD, uh, is saying, hey, specify the first point. Well, you look down here in your command line and it's saying, specify the first point. So it doesn't replace the command line necessarily, but it does repeat it and keeps it right there where your eye is, okay? Imagine drawing, creating stuff for eight to 10 hours a day in the CAD system, all right? If you're constantly having to look, I know this sounds crazy, but if you're constantly having to look in a different spot for information all the time as you're drawing, there can be some fatigue develop. Okay? So putting it up here is very handy. All right? Sometimes you just don't need it, though. You can turn it off. You know, you're, it's just you don't need all that information right now. You're just creating some general stuff. Okay? So it's up to you, but it tells you uh, where your cursor is, okay, X and Y. Now, you notice one of them is highlighted, all right? It's ready to accept input when it's highlighted like that in blue, or if you, most of the time it's going to be blue, just a general setup. So you can key in uh, a coordinate at this point, all right? So it's at 3.1452 inches. So I could accept that and go on, or I could key in a distance. And then after I keyed in an X distance, this would be absolute. Okay. Then I hit the tab key. It locks that as the X. All right. And then I key in the next uh, parameter, and it should start, hmm, the screen is, my screen's always going to be kind of jumpy up here, because I'm recording, and I've got two or three other graphic uh, sensitive programs, or graphic hogs, I've got the projector, uh, not the projector, but the camera running, and the PowerPoint running, and I'm recording, so it's really taking all my memory for uh, my video card. So my cursor really is jumpy, okay? It's having a hard time refreshing the information. 
All right, so it looks like if I hover as close as I can to where the start point is, all right, uh, let's look at the coordinate display, folks. Look down in here. And you could be doing this along with me, or you can just look up, look up here. And it's kind of hard to see. It kind of my screen kind of chops it off over here. But does that look like 2.5 by 2.5? What is it? What is it showing there? What's it look like? Can you see it from back there? <laughs> yeah, it looks like something like that, doesn't it? But it's displaying 0 0.917 uh, at an angle of 4 degrees. What? You know, I've, I'm, my cursor is near. This tells me where my cursor is. Oh, okay. So it's telling me there at my dynamic display, it's 4 degrees on an angle, and it's that far away. And that's from the last point entered. Okay? That's what it's showing me. So if you touch F6, my Dana, oh, that's, I've changed it, sorry. Had a mental lapse there. You now have to actually go down here and click. Okay, I clicked it once. Now look what it's displaying. In the coordinate display, it's actually now reading, okay, absolute coordinates. Up here at dynamic input, he's pretty much staying at dynamic input. It's telling me that uh, I'm pretty close. I'm 0 0.2683 from my last point entered at a degree of something. I can't even read the degree. It's covered up by the, the prompt. Okay? So, that's how it functions together uh, and how the display, dynamic display works. Okay? So, it's going to show you in uh, last point entered and pretty much a polar kind of input, distance and angle, okay? <laughs> there, I got it on top of it. So now it's at 0.5172 and 151 degrees. Wow, 151 degrees. Remember, that's because zero is over here, 90, 180, okay? And 270. Okay, so it must be reading 151 degrees from this direction. Oh, okay, it is. So it's not reading absolute degrees. Okay, absolute degrees in CAD always runs counterclockwise. So it's from the point I'm showing to back to zero counterclockwise is 151 degrees. Okay? Not this way. It's going counterclockwise. From the point I'm getting ready to pick back to zero, it's reading out 151 degrees. Okay? So you can use the dynamic input. It's giving you information, feedback information at the cursor. Notice down here in the command line, I've punched some buttons and clicked some toggles. So it's just telling me what I'm doing with my cursor at different locations. It's not reading out my information here if I want to draw dynamically. Okay? So I could key in a distance. So I'll key in 0.75 and then hit the tab key on your keyboard and that forces it to the next entry which is degrees. So I'm going to put 150 degrees. Okay, now it's ready for the next entry. 
and it starts spreading out and when you get closer to the start point it kind of jams all the information together and as you get further away from it it kind of spreads it out why they do that I don't know but that's the way it behaves okay so your stuff your information starts spreading out further and further so your little box is now halfway in between where you last entered and uh, where you're getting ready to pick all right so that's how dynamic input behaves. Okay. Well, the the push tab again? Yes. Oh, after you put the degrees in, you just hit enter. Okay. Yeah. I think if you hit tab again, it'll jump back to distance. I think it'll just keep uh, circling back, cycling back through. Okay. All right, so you know how to start up AutoCAD, and then it'll take you through basically what a little bit of what I've just uh, talked about, okay, in your tutorial. You do want to try these things. Some of the chapters takes you through a tutorial, and you're not really drawing anything. You're just trying out stuff. Experiment with it. Try it. Use it. See what it feels like. See how it works, okay? Then... After you do several of these, let's see if I want to talk about this. Uh, you can change dynamic input prompts and the way it looks. Totally up to you. I don't customize it any way you want, as long as it still functions. Then when you see this in the book, in the tutorial book, a uh, little bulb should go off in your head. Oh, I'm getting ready to draw something. All right. So then it gives you all the dimensions. So take a few moments, you know, when you're getting ready to do this tutorial and try to understand what this thing is shaped like and what physical size it really is. Now this is in millimeters, so remember about 25 millimeters makes an inch, 25.4 exactly, 25.4 millimeters equals an inch, okay? So that right there is almost three inches long. Okay, and that's about one and a half inches. So there's two inches, roughly. Since we're always dealing with inches, all right, hardly ever measuring in millimeters. Does anybody measure in millimeters all the time? Probably not. You know, everything is still pretty much inches. I wish we would have switched to the metric system when Thomas Jefferson, the president in 1820, Right, I think, wanted to change the United States to the metric system. He tried to get that pushed through, and Congress wouldn't do it. And it died with him. Okay? So if we just switched over to that, I mean, I think a lot of study and a lot of things that we do would be a lot easier. Because the metric system being based on tens is just so easy once you get into it. All right. It says here at the bottom, before continuing the next page, on your own make a rough freehand sketch showing the steps that can be used to create the design. Well, you know, you don't have to do that. All right. That's pushing it just a little bit at this juncture. All right. Your level of uh, expertise, except for maybe Sam over here. She's been doing some sketching in my other class, so. Then maybe Patrick might be able to do that. No? Because of his machining and stuff he does on his own. But uh, we don't have to, I mean, you know, you're not knowledgeable of all the commands and stuff yet. So, anyway, ignore that. So, activating the startup option. I went over that last week. So you know how to do that, so you'll have a little review of that, set that up. Then you're going to start from uh, scratch, and you're going to set it up as a metric drawing. Then you're going to go to drawing units, and it tells you to set it up as no digits in the decimal points. Okay? Because when you look at the drawing, oh, 
there's no decimal points. It's all full metric, uh, full millimeters. All right, so no digits in the decimal point. Now, don't forget, though, what I told you you should always do to make your life a little easier, and that is to set your angle precision at least to one decimal place, always. Okay? And just make your life a lot easier. So do that, even though it's not mentioned here. Yep. Yeah, one decimal place. Then it takes you through drawing area set up. Woohoo! We're going to set it up as 200 by 150. So your first uh, prompt uh, in the command prompt area near the bottom of the AutoCAD drawing screen, you should see this. Enter negative 200, comma, negative 150. Okay, through the dynamic entry boxes, dynamic input entry boxes. Play along with it. Put them in the entry boxes. Okay? So your screen will look like that on page 211. And that's where you'll key in this. You don't have to put a comma because it has, has it broken down into two input boxes, X and Y. All right. Then in the upper right-hand corner, for the uh, drawing area, you'll go 200, comma 150. Okay, so negative and then positive. So therefore, we're going to have a drawing area that's how big on the X? The absolute size of it. What will it be? Okay, remember, it's X, Y. Cartesian coordinate graph. All right, and we're starting the lower left at negative 200. When we, then we do the upper right, and it's a positive 200 on the x. So what is the total distance of x? 400. Okay. Let's see, not a trick question. All right, and then it says to do a negative 150 on the Y. All right, so that's down, okay, on the Y. And then a positive 150 on the Y for the upper. So those added together will be 300, even though one of them is negative. Hmm, but it's that number line thing, okay? So your total units... Is added together, all right? It's not algebraic where you're going to subtract it, okay? It's on a graph. All right, so our total area now is going to be 400 by 300 millimeters, not feet. So when you look at your project, you've got your radius here, folks, is 25. So from that Maximum left-hand side to the center is 25 millimeters. And then 50 to the center, so that's what? 75. And then from the center, you follow that center line vertically up, plus 70, that's 145, plus 25. Okay? Which would be what? 100 and... 70. Okay, 145 plus 25 would be 170 millimeters. So my object is 170 millimeters wide on the y axis, maximum. Okay, the dynamic size of it. My drawing area is 400. Okay, so the author in setting this up has gone to the extreme. He's basically more than doubled the amount of space that the drawing would take up. That's a good rule of thumb you can follow. It's not going to hurt anything. It doesn't harm anything. This, you can follow that. And any object that you're drawing, find the maximum X, the maximum Y, 
and double it and set your coordinates to that. Okay, for your drawing area. That'll give you space to draw in. Then when you want to find out, you know, get your drawing back to normal viewing size, you do a zoom all, it'll bring it back in, put it in your uh, screen area, your graphics area, based upon your drawing limits. Okay? So it's just a good way to get back home by setting it up like that. So you always want some kind of drawing area. Okay, your menu bar. Okay. Anybody remember how we set that up? How do we get that turned on, our menu bar? Test your memories. Anybody? Right there? Okay. And then show menu bar. Okay. Yep. Very good. Way to go. Old memory cells are working. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. All right. Anything else I want to say before I turn you loose? I'm going to do a quick flip through here. Your world coordinate system is talked about just a little bit more in here, so... Please pay attention to that and take a moment to read that. Uh, there are some CAD systems that call it local coordinate system, all right, and user coordinate system. So in default, the user coordinate system is aligned with the world coordinate system. So it is there. It's just fully aligned with the world. We can move it off by itself. And we use the user coordinate system later when we're doing a special type of view or when we're working with three-dimensional objects. So we jump into creating circles. Please play, pay close attention to every step when you're creating the circle and pay close attention to whether you're going to key in a radius or a diameter. All right? You'll know right away if you've got it too small or too large. They'll show up not like this. Okay? So, look what we're doing. We created an area, and you're going to create a circle right there at the center at 0, 0. And then you're going to relative move, possibly over to here, or actually use... Uh, Absolute coordinates, it says, of 50, minus 50, minus 60. Oh, that's for this one. And then uh, positive 70, positive 40, X, Y, to find the center of this one. So we're using absolutes to locate these two smaller circles. This technique that you're seeing right here of developing an object, looking at an object, looking at its geometry, and saying... Huh, where are the centers located? And studying that, figuring out where the centers are located when there's circles and arcs involved. Drawing those first. Get your basic circles and arcs as much as you can, and then connect it with arcs or lines. All right? And that's what you do. After you get those basic circles, those three circles identified, then you're just connecting them uh, using uh, a tangent function and making it tangent. Tangent means it's completely congruent, completely uh, matched up with uh, either the line to a line or a line to an arc, arc to an arc, circle to a circle. They take up the same space. They're at the same coordinates at that location. Okay? It also means this. Something is considered tangent. A line is considered tangent to a circle. When a perpendicular line to uh, the tangent line you're drawing can be drawn through the center of the circle. 
So there would be a 90 degree angle at the point of connection. There is a six step process that we do when we draw something like this manually. So when we were drawing on the board, it could be as much as six steps just to get a tangent line going because it had to be tangent, right? Whereas in CAD, it does it for us with that simple command or object snap called tangent that you'll turn on. And AutoCAD's thinking, oh, okay, I'm going to draw a line to this circle, and it's going to be perpendicular through the center. And it does that all mathematically. It doesn't really know what tangent means. It's it's a mathematical trigonomet trigonometry calculation that's doing, okay, through uh, matrix algebra. So that's what's going on in the background while you're drawing. So when you draw a line tangent to an arc, Okay, so I started up a circle, this generic circle. Now I want to draw a tangent to it. So a couple of different ways you can do this. You can type the abbreviation for tangent, T-A-N, enter. You can go to your uh, snaps down here. Move over. Oh, i got to turn dynamic off. It's getting in my way. Okay, so I go down here to my object snaps, right click, and I turn on tangent. Okay, so now tangent is on, and it's on all the time. I can do it that way. And when I hover, whoops, I know I picked tangent. Okay, all right, let's talk, let's talk about this right now, okay? Sometimes AutoCAD is so helpful, it tries to help you, okay, all the time. So, and sometimes you try to help yourself too much. So that can happen here in the object snap realm. So when you right click on there, uh, if you have too many turned on, it's going to gravitate or magnetize to that particular geometry even though you, I'm wanting it to do tangent. So, here's what you need to do when that, and you're not getting the tangent or you're not getting the object snap that you want. Okay? Go to settings, right click on uh, O snap, left click on settings, alright? And then look at what you've got chosen. And I've got tons, I consider, uh, over half of the snap mode selected. So I'm going to clear all, okay? And I'm going to pick uh, endpoint and uh, tangent. And I, I kind of like extension turned on all the time, no matter what kind of mix I use. Okay, so this is called running object snap modes leading you a little bit further along but it's called running object snap modes so it runs in the background all the time when you got them turned on so you can pick any mix that you want don't pick too many okay you can force it to scroll through okay but don't pick too many it'll frustrate you you can change this any time while you're drawing. You don't have to set it up once and then try to live with it over and over. Feel free to go in there and change it when it seems to be getting in the way and not allowing you to pick what you want. All right, so I've got that turned on. Object snap is on, which is also the F3 button on your keyboard. Now in my line command. Notice I've made all these changes and I'm still in the line command. 
it remembers. It stays in the line command. So notice when I hover over the edge of the circle about where I want it to be tangent, it says deferred tangent. And it's got the little tangent symbol with three dots. So you'll see that for several different types of object snaps. So what that means is, is AutoCAD is telling you, hey, I cannot tell you exactly where it is yet until you enter the other endpoint of the line. So I pick that and notice what I can do. I kind of move around and it's kind of like stepped in chewing gum, you know, and it stretches all around. Notice how it kind of flips when I get down here. If I get too close, oh, all right. See what it's doing? Kind of jumps up there to the other side of the arc. So that'll play with you some when you're doing some other geometry creation later on. In the tutorial, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay. So where you're going to pick your next point if it's dynamic, you have to pay attention to uh, how close you are to the original object. I can just move a little bit and make it flop from one side to the other. Okay, so when I pick my other point, notice the tangent, notice the tangent symbol is gone. I've picked it, the deferred tangent, it asked me to pick, I picked it, and now it's going to calculate where the tangency point is. All right, I'm going to test it. I'm going to draw a line, okay, and I'm going to make it perpendicular to this line. So I type PER, enter, and the little deferred perpendicular shows up. Okay, and I pick it, and uh, look what it'll do. Okay, I'm drawing a line perpendicular. It'll, it'll pretty much draw it out here somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to draw now to the center of that circle. So I'm typing CEN, enter, to force it to do a center only O snap. Okay, so I'm looking for the center of the circle. Hey, nothing's lighting up. That's because you've got to hover over the edge. It doesn't know what circle you're talking about until you hover over the edge. Okay. Oh, did I press enter? There it goes. All right. So there's the center. So you hover over here. It finds the center. Then when the then when the uh, uh, geometry snap symbol lights up, object snap symbol lights up, then you know you're at the center. Okay, you don't have to worry about getting right in the center of that little green circle. When that thing lights up and says center, and you've got your green circle on, you are at the center of that circle, exactly at the center. So you don't have to wait or move around, try to find where is that center at. It's telling you it's right here. All right, now I've drawn a line perpendicular to this tangent line I drew to the center. Okay. Now I use another command that you'll find later called list. L-I-S-T. Kind of an ominous sounding command. And when you use list, you can list information about entities. So I'm picking these two entities and when I do that, it shows me the angle in the XY plane. So the first thing I picked was this one, 227, and then this one, 317. The difference between those two angles is 90 degrees. All right? And so the circle with a tangent line tangent point will be constructed by a perpendicular to the line I'm trying to draw tangent. Okay, a 90 degree angle. 
will show up. So that's basic, some basic geometry. All right. Got carried away as I usually do. So I love, love this stuff. Then you explore the trim command. You use the polygon command to create a hexagon shape in the center and creating a concentric circle. You'll experiment with the quick calculator that comes with AutoCAD to measure distance and an angle. Go ahead and play along with that. It doesn't really change your drawing. It's a way of getting information in and out of your drawing. You'll measure an angle. So you want to look that you get the same results, 11.6804. Then you save it as rocker arm. You'll save it as T-U-T, capital letters, everything capital, even though it has it in here as upper and lower case. Everything uppercase, T-U-T, dash, rocker arm, all one word, dash, your initials. All right, now when you get over here, you're going to have to be creative. This is where you're going to do a little more digital literacy stuff. When you do your review questions, all right, you're going to need to do them in, in Word. You're going to need to draw this in AutoCAD. Okay, you'll actually draw this angle, triangle, and find out that distance. Use your quick calculator to do that or list. You can do it that way. And then you'll give me the information. But what I want you to do, everybody, is to copy and paste your drawing from AutoCAD into Word. So you'll just do a copy to a clipboard and then drop it into Word. You don't have to put the length on it. Okay, you don't have to put the dimensions on it, but just draw the triangle to these specifications and then copy and paste it in. You do the same thing for this object. Okay, so your Word document will look just like this. With You can just put the answers. Here you'll say length equals and then angle equals and then show me the drawing. Same thing here, length, angle, and then show the drawing. This concludes our look at Chapter 2, Basic Object Creation and Dynamic Input. Please be sure and check your chapter review questions and save them in the correct format. And we'll see you in class or in Blackboard.